From our Chicago studios, this is the Muslim News on Muslim Network TV. Assalamu alaikum, I'm Samana Siddiqui. Our top story tonight. A new study has found that for white Americans, Muslim identity is one of the most important factors in determining who should be allowed to immigrate to the U.S. Researchers Amanda Sahar Durso and Tabitha Bonilla examined the importance of identity when it comes to perceptions of Muslim immigration among white Americans. They found that white Americans prefer Christian immigrants and do not want Muslim immigrants of any race to settle in the U.S. However, respondents also believe white Muslims will have an easier time integrating into American culture than non-white Muslims. Respondents also said they believe Christian and Jewish immigrants are more likely to adapt to American culture than Muslim immigrants. The white surveyed said they felt Muslims are more likely to be cultural outsiders. The study was posted this week on the website of US App, which is run by the London School of Economics at Filan United States Center. There is increasing conflict between the Democratic Party and Muslims in the U.S. That's according to researcher Ilad Ben David in his paper published by the Big and Sadat Center for Strategic Studies at Israel's Bar Ilan University. David says the rise of Islamophobia after the 9-11 attacks led many Muslims to join the Democratic Party. This was in response to its support of Muslims at the time. But that alliance is now being challenged by the Democrats' growing allegiance to the cause of LGBTQ rights and ideologies that are often at odds with Islamic values. The paper highlights the potential for interfaith cooperation between Muslims and Orthodox Jews who share conservative and religious values. David says that while some Muslim voices do coexist within the party with the LGBTQ community, more conservative Islamic figures vehemently oppose cooperation with a group whose action they consider morally unacceptable. David's study highlights the perspectives of key Muslim clerics. That includes Imam Zaid Shakir, Imam Omar Suleiman, and Sheikh Yasser Qadhi, who have expressed concern about the impact of the LGBTQ agenda on Islamic values. They argue that this alliance threatens the future of Islam in America and accuse Democrats of hypocrisy for not respecting conservative religious values. Quoting Qadhi, David writes that Democrats are tolerant until Muslims align themselves with their so-called progressive values, which exposes their alleged insincerity. The study underscores the concerted efforts within the American Muslim community to oppose LGBTQ-related teachings in schools. Former President Donald Trump surrendered today at the Fulton County Jail in Georgia. He was booked on more than a dozen charges. Charges connect him to conspiracy, among others, to reverse Georgia's 2020 election results. It is the fourth time this year that Trump faced criminal charges. He was released on a $200,000 bond and other release conditions, which include not using social media to target the co-defendants and witnesses in the case. House Republicans have meanwhile launched an investigation into the Fulton County DA after the Trump indictment. A gunman opened fire at a popular bar in California on Wednesday night, killing three people and injuring six others. The victims are the shooter's estranged wife, two other women, and a man. The shooter, who was believed to be a retired police officer, was also killed. The motive for the shooting is not yet known, but authorities believe it may have been domestic-related. The incident is the latest in a string of mass shootings in the U.S., this year so far, there have been more than 400 mass shootings. These are identified as those in which four or more people were injured or killed, excluding the shooter. A group of parents and students have filed a petition with the U.S. Supreme Court challenging the admissions policy of Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology in Alexandria, Virginia. The petitioners allege that the policy discriminates against Asian American students based on race. They argue that the school's revised admissions guidelines unfairly favor underrepresented black and Hispanic students over Asian Americans. The petitioners claim that that policy violates the Equal Protection Clause of the U.S. Constitution, which prohibits race-based discrimination. They argue that the policy is a form of what they call racial balancing designed to reduce the number of Asian American students at the school. A previous appeals court ruling found no evidence of discriminatory intent against Asian American students. But a recent decision by the Supreme Court in a case involving Harvard University has led to increased scrutiny of race-based admissions policies in educational institutions. The White House has expressed concern after a video showed Israeli forces shooting a Palestinian in the back of his head during a raid in the occupied West Bank.
A State Department spokesperson told Andalou News Agency that the U.S. is alarmed at the reports of shooting unarmed Palestinian civilians. The spokesperson sought a complete and objective investigation into the incident. The shooting occurred Monday during an Israeli raid in the town of Beita, south of the city of Nablus. 34-year-old Amit al jaghoun appears to be shot in the back of his head. He was seen rushing to assist another Palestinian who was injured by Israeli fire. The victim does not appear to be armed and is seen running in the opposite direction of Israeli forces when he is shot. al jaghoun was transported to a local hospital where he underwent treatment for his wounds and was transferred to an intensive care unit. Turkish doctor leads team to develop a U.S. breast cancer vaccine. Details after the break, so stay tuned and we'll be right back. Welcome back. Turkish physician Attila Soran is leading a team of researchers in the U.S. to develop a vaccine designed to prevent the progression of breast cancer. The vaccine is currently being tested on 10 volunteers as part of a clinical trial. If successful, it could be used to prevent breast cancer in millions of women around the world. The research was conducted at University of Pittsburgh Medical Center under the direction of Saran, who is a breast surgery oncologist. He says he is confident that the vaccine represents an important breakthrough in the fight against this disease. Breast cancer is the second most deadly cancer in women after lung cancer. Over 300,000 women are expected to be diagnosed with it in the U.S. this year. The Organization of Islamic Cooperation, or OIC, has called on India to withdraw all illegal and unilateral measures taken in the disputed region of Kashmir on or after August 5, 2019. On that day, India's Hindu nationalist government revoked the autonomous status of Jammu and Kashmir and divided it into two centrally governed union territories. The OIC's call came at an event in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, highlighting the human rights situation in Kashmir. The 57-member bloc of Muslim-majority countries called on India to immediately end gross, systematic and widespread human rights violations in Kashmir. The Indian government has defended its actions in Kashmir, saying they are necessary to curb what it calls separatism and economic backwardness in the region. However, the OIC says it is deeply concerned about the human rights situation in Kashmir and called on India to take immediate steps to address the concerns. The Indian government has in the past accused the OIC of interfering in its internal affairs. The Kashmir dispute is a long-standing dispute between India and Pakistan and is a major source of tension between the two countries. Pakistan's Supreme Court has identified flaws in the conviction of former Prime Minister Imran Khan in a corruption case. Khan, who is currently in prison, is challenging his three-year sentence for concealing information about government gifts he received while in office. Chief Justice Umar Atabanyal noted these concerns when he considered Khan's petition against the court's ruling. He also questioned the fairness of the trial, pointing out that Khan had not been given sufficient opportunity to present his case. The case, known as the Toshikhana case, is scheduled to be heard by the Islamabad High Court. The Supreme Court will await the outcome of that hearing before taking further action. Chief Justice Bandial stressed the need to consider the upcoming Supreme Court case before making a decision. Khan's conviction led to the Election Commission of Pakistan barring him from public office. Since his impeachment by a vote of no confidence in April 2022, he has been implicated in several cases that he considers unjust. U.S. Central Forces Commander General Michael Eric Carrilla has visited the al hol and ar camps of displaced people in Syria. The camps, manned by anti-Turkish Kurd terrorist groups, host the families of ISIS terrorists. CENTCOM said in a written statement on Wednesday that the visit took place on August 21st. It involved interactions with camp administrators as well as camp residents themselves to observe firsthand the current humanitarian conditions. The CENTCOM commander emphasized cooperation with the SDF, a self-rebranded group comprising cadres of YPG or PKK. Carilla also met with the commanders of these groups. The UN and non-governmental organizations have voiced concerns over the humanitarian conditions in the two camps. The UN's humanitarian affairs chief has expressed concern at the fighting in Sudan. He said that aid routes have been blocked as food runs out in the war-torn country. 
Martin Griffith says fighting has become especially fierce in South Darfur and South Kordofan. He is urging the warring parties to cease hostilities and allow aid delivery. Thousands of people have been killed and more than four million displaced since the beginning of the war between the Rapid Support Forces and the Sudanese Armed Forces on April 15th. The two warring parties signed a humanitarian agreement in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, in June, which granted the opening of humanitarian corridors to deliver assistance to civilians. However, the truce was repeatedly violated by the two sides. Taliban authorities in Afghanistan have prevented about 100 women from boarding a plane to Dubai. They had been sponsored by a UAE billionaire to study in a university. Khalaf Ahmed Al-Habtur, the founding chairman of the Al-Habtur Group, says the women were prevented from boarding the plane at Kabul airport. This was despite the fact that they had the necessary travel documents and were accompanied by a male supervisor. The incident is the latest example of the Taliban restricting women's rights since its takeover of the country in August 2021. Since then, the government has closed universities and high schools to female students, banned women from traveling alone, and required women to wear face veils in public. The UAE has criticized the Taliban's treatment of women, and its foreign minister has called on the Taliban to respect the rights of girls and women. That's all from our Chicago studios tonight. Thank you for tuning in. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon for the latest updates. For more content, keep watching Muslim Network TV or visit muslimnetwork.tv. Salam and good night.